Parshas Lech Lecha. I dedicate this shir, this lesson, to the memory of my late father, Rabbi Samuel H. Perro, Harav Shmuel Tzvi Ben Osher, whose 21st year outside is next week. This week's parsha describes the beginnings of the relationship between the Almighty, Hashem, and Avraham, Abraham. And Hashem promises Avraham success, a uh, great reputation, children, he also promises him the land of Israel. And he says, this land will belong to your children. Uh, when when uh, Avram hears this, he expresses his gratitude to the Almighty. And uh, the way he does that, among other things, is by even Shem's back, he builds an altar. Then he leaves that place. He leaves Shechem and he goes south. Shechem is towards the north of the country. He goes south towards the area of, of Yericho, uh, but further south. But, uh, take me Shem Hahara. And he moved from there towards the mountains, Mikedem Leves El, east of Beis El, which is the new name of the city Luz. And he pitched his tent um, between Beit El and Ai. There's Beit El to the west and Ai to the east. And he built another altar, Vayiven Shem Zbech Hashem. And then the Torah adds, Vayikra B'Shem Hashem. And he called in the name of God. So we have a couple of questions, which is, number one, why is it important that we know that he was precisely, or not necessarily precisely, but he was located between Beit El and I? Okay. I mean, it seems to be incidental, unless there's actually something more substantively compelling about that location. And what did he, what did he do there? Why, why does the Torah give us the detail? And why, in fact, did he choose that spot? Now we know, we have a couple of uh, hints, if you will. One of them is he built an altar. The second is that he called out in the name of God. So what is calling out in the name of God? There are uh, different different opinions. Uh, Unculus, who translates the uh, Torah into Aramaic, he says it means that he prayed. The Ramban takes issue with that. And he says it means that he called out God's name, meaning he publicized God's name. He preached, if you will. And uh, other Mephorshim uh, say that it implies both, that he both prayed and he uh, uh, publicized God's name. Now, we know this is a very strong tradition. Um, there's uh, the tradition we say that when he left the Sarah, he also took with, they took with them the um, people who they, this is uh, made in Haran, and the commentaries say that they made them, meaning that they refine them into people who had a God consciousness. Now, there, uh, later on in the book of Bereshus, of Genesis, the Torah describes um, how Avram would call in the name of God. We can look in um, Perak Chafalaf, Pasuk Lama Gimel, that's 2133. And the verse says, he, he planted a, a, an Esha, which is a type of tree, in uh, Be'er Sheva. Hashem Kelalam. And he called there in the name of God of the world. Rashi explains when he when it says that he um, th th that the two are connected, this planting of the tree. Through that tree, God's name was made known. How's that? So the tree provided shade, and Avraham welcomed guests, and we know this from Later on, this was his thing, inviting wayfarers into his home, providing them with meals, with uh, creature comforts. And Rashi says, and after they would eat and drink, in, in other words, after they would uh, enjoy Avram's hospitality, so Avram Avinu would say to them, bless he of whose food you ate. Do you think you, you ate, it was mine? You ate from the food that belongs to the one who spoke and created the world. In other words, God. He's piercing the consciousness of the day and uh, in, in an attempt to bring a God consciousness to a pagan world. And so this, is, this evidently is Avram's mission. He is a man on a mission. He's spreading awareness of God. In fact, later on, Rashi comments that Avram moved on from the area in which he was when he was camped near Sodom because there were no longer, because of all the destruction, people weren't traveling anymore. So he had no one to attempt to influence him to bring closer. So he moved on. Well, here, 
he pitched his tent precisely between Beit El and I. Why? So, uh, according to uh, Ramosha Sternbuch, the Chavitz, he quotes the Chavitz Chaim, and he says that the placement was not incidental. The, the, um, he selected a site that was a popular trail between the two cities. I have a little map here. I don't know if you can see it. Uh, we have near the top, here's the, the Dead Sea. And uh, north and west is, there's slightly west is Yericho. And then you have two cities that are very close to each other. And that's I and Beit El. And as you would expect, people traveled in between the two. Avram pitched his tent in between and he built an altar. And presumably he offered hospitality to people, but they would stop, they'd look at the altar, they would talk to him, perhaps they would eat, and he would engage them in conversation and he would talk. And why did he do that there? Well, Chavetz Chaim explains, according to Rav Sternbuch, Chavetz Chaim explains that um, just like a person who is a shop owner, is in retail, he has to pick a location where his market is. If you pick a location outside of your market, you're not going to be successful. So Avram located his place, his home, his encampment, in a place where he would get a lot of foot traffic, literally. And that way, he would have, he would maximize his opportunity, his exposure, and his opportunity to spread the word. Uh, Rav Sturm suggests that this is a, um, an important principle for us to keep in mind generally, which is place matters. Like they say in the real estate uh, industry, there are three factors that determine the value of a uh, property, and that is location, location, location. It's all about where you are. And that's true when you are looking to influence people. It's also true when you're looking not to be influenced by people. So there's something of a uh, dichotomy that takes place about where a person should locate himself. It, it could be that there's a, a fine neighborhood, uh, but people aren't quite as particular about the things that are important to you, whether it's um, observing Shabbos, uh, maybe they take a uh, too casual an approach, or maybe there's a lot of competition as far as uh, uh, conspicuous consumption goes, and what kind of pressure is that going to put on you? What kind of pressure is that going to put on your children? Etc. So there's there's a a constant calibration that we need to uh, make whenever we are choosing to move to a new location. I know of people who are offered uh, very good positions in academic institutions, in medical institutions, in places outside of where they were living, and they declined the positions because the educational opportunities for their children, the Jewish educational opportunities for their children were not as solid as where they were living and they passed up prestige and presu presumably income as well. Where you live matters, but it doesn't only matter for your own spirituality. It matters for the spirituality of the people around you. We all are agents of the Almighty. He puts us here for a reason. We have a mission to accomplish. Sometimes we have multiple missions to accomplish. Sometimes they're unusual. Sometimes they're just living a good life Rabbi Joseph Soloveitchik says, just being an example of being a solid citizen may in fact be your mission. Whatever it is, where you live, where you work, where you choose to congregate is an important factor in accomplishing, in, in, in increasing the likelihood of accomplishing your life's mission. Have a good chance.